Welcome to the Bible Broadcast with preacher, teacher, and missionary Perry Demopoulos. The Bible Broadcast is a ministry for the purpose that the lost might be saved, that the saved may be edified, and that the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, would be glorified. We hope that the Lord will bless you with today's message. Join in with us now and let's hear today's broadcast. Now, the subject we're going to take up today has to do with questions and answers. Usually, a preacher or teacher may have a session called questions and answers. And just like them, Jeremiah went through a very terrible situation having to deal with a backslidden country. And if there is any country that is a type of Israel, it is America, where you've had so many preachers down through the years preach and teach the Word of God where America did see revivals at one time, but the baloney that they speak about revivals today is not of God. So in this chapter, of chapter 8 of Jeremiah, the prophet, Jeremiah was was the weeping prophet. He was a prophet that was told to say what God said. For instance, in chapter 8, verse 4, the Bible says, Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord. Well, how in the world can you say what the Lord says if you don't have a King James Bible? You know, there's hundreds and hundreds of preachers and teachers all over that are not preaching from a King James Bible. And you want to know why there's so much chaos in the body of Christ. Well, when I went into a bookstore, I think it was Books a Million, and I looked in the religious section and I opened up one of the books by one of the Christian authors, saved authors, I hope he saved, In the beginning of that book, he made reference and made a list of all the, quote, Bibles, end of quote, he would refer to. There were well over nine different versions that he used. You know what? Which Bible was his final authority? His own opinion, because he sat and sits over all the other versions and picks and chooses whatever version he wants to. You talk about a muddled up mess of confusion today, and people want to know and talk about a revival. So in chapter 8, the prophet Jeremiah raises up a number of questions, and then he also, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, gives the answer. So I call this chapter, although it has to do with God's judgment against the Jewish leaders, I call it the chapter of questions and answers. And I think it's right for you to have questions about what God is doing at times and when you don't know, and it's good to be frank and honest with the Lord and say, now, Lord, what of it? But be honest, put all 52 cards up on the table. I don't mean about asking questions about doubting the word of God, like Satan said, yea, hath God said, and Eve took from the word of God. She didn't say the word freely. And then she added to the word of God, neither shall you touch it. And you've got commandments from the beginning of the Bible to the end that you shouldn't diminish from it or add to the word of God. But now you've got people that are spiritual perverts that are perverting the words of God. And when I say the words of God, I'm talking about every word in the authorized King James Bible, not just word, capital W, and then talk about something that nobody has in their hands because they profess they're somewhere in the originals, which they don't have. That's an escape, an easy way out, and a cowardish way of looking at what the Bible says that God can preserve his words from generation to generation, Psalms 12, verses 6 and 7. So now we come to the first question in chapter 8 in verse 5. Well, we'll start at the paragraph in verse 4. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not rise? Shall he turn away and not return? Now here are two questions right away, and then followed by yet another question in verse 5. Now watch this. Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? Now, that's the question. And then in verse 6, you have another question. Verse 6, I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. 
No man tempted him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rusheth in the battle. So they're asking this question, What have I done? You see, Jeremiah noticed that, that people are backslidden, they hold fast deceit, and then they ask, what have I done, as if they've done nothing wrong. But then here comes the answer. Now watch this. This is our question and answer time with the prophet Jeremiah, who gets to the bottom of the reason why the country was shot to hell, just like America. In verse 8, look at this. How do ye say, we are wise? and the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pens of the scribes is in vain. Now look at that. Do you see that? He's talking about the pen of the scribes. It's in vain. Those that are scribes are those that write the script. They write the words of God. They had an unfaithful attitude toward the preservation of God's holy words. Look at verse 9, the result of that. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. We did a recording concerning those that are taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? So you answer the question, well, it's a wisdom that's not of God. It's a worldly, sensual, devilish wisdom because the scribes are writing in vain. They're writing perverted words that are written, scripted on paper. And lo and behold, over 300 translations in English that are all contrary to one another and especially against the living words of the living God in the King James Bible. There's the answer. And that's the problem. And that's which starts the damnation of any nation. When Satan uses, whether they are saved or unsaved, it doesn't make a difference to him. As long as they're blinded concerning the preservation of the words of God, that country has had it. And it's only the beginning of the end. 1881 in England and in 1901 in America with the American Standard Version. So you've got a multiplicity of questions and then the answers. For instance, again, he says in verse 4, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? Answer, they hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Well, deceit comes from Satan. He is out to deceive the whole world. Revelation 12, 9. Verse 6 now it says, what have I done? Everyone turned to his course. There it is. There's the answer. As the horse rusheth into the battle. Next question, how do ye say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Here's the answer, lo, certainly in vain, made he it, the pen of the scribes is in vain. Then the next question, the wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed and taken, lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. Question, and what wisdom is in them? Here's the answer in the second half of verse 10. For every one, from the least even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness. From the prophet, a preacher, even unto the priest. Well, back then, that was those that took care of things concerning the temple. Every one dealeth falsely. Well, there you go again. Falsely. You get false witnesses of false Bibles because of false manuscripts and false teachers that are teaching a lie. Every one of them. From all the new evangelicals, the evangelicals, and your so-called fundamentalists from all these major colleges all around the world, especially in North America. So first of all, to answer the first question, why are they backslidden? Well, we've already answered that in this section. We've answered that at least four or five times. Then number two, why are they sitting still? Look what it says in verse 14. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves, and let us enter into the defense cities, and let us be silent there. For the Lord our God hath put us to silence, and given us water of gall to drink, because we have sinned against the Lord. Well, there's the answer. You want to know what the problem is? Sin. The worst word in any dictionary is the little three-letter word, sin, with the letter I in the middle. Yeah, you're the problem. I am the problem. 
where you don't want to get right and listen to what God says in a King James Bible, and you don't want to obey what God says. Well, it says there at the beginning of the verse 14, why do we sit still? And at the end of the verse, you've got the answer. Jeremiah gives you the answer because we have sinned against the Lord. And when you sin, friend, no matter who you have sinned against, whether it's against yourself or you've sinned against God, against another person, in the end, it's sin against God. That's what David said, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. And when David said that, he's talking about the God of the Bible. So we've got to answer question number two, why are they sitting still? Because they didn't believe the enemy was coming. Those Jews were just having a good old time. They could care less what a prophet was telling them about their idleness, about their backslidden condition. They thought that God was up there in heaven just having a good old time like Santa Claus and giving them gifts every Christmas or saying Jesus is risen every springtime and just go on their, along their wicked worldly ways as if nothing is wrong. You've got preachers today from state to state that are praying for a re revival. Well, you want to pray for a revival with a perverted version of the Bible in your hand, friend? That means you don't even know what you're doing. That's exactly what is mentioned in verse 6. What have I done? You don't realize what this country started with, a King James Bible. And we can argue day and night talking about whether this country was started as a Christian country or not. The thing is, which Bible was used during the awakenings in this country? And it sure wasn't a revised version. It sure wasn't the New American Standard Version or uh, American Standard Version of 1901. It was a King James Bible from 1611 from England. You got these jokers, Olstein and John MacArthur, Charles Stanley, Andy Stanley, Chuck Swindoll, and these men might be right on some things, uh, but that's the deceit where people don't think they're doing anything wrong because the sphere of purity, purity is a pure Bible, the Holy Word of God, a King James Bible. I heard Billy Graham over nationwide television tell Johnny Carson that the new versions are better because they're more understandable and so on and so forth. When a man like Johnny Carson asks him, well, what about the King James Bible and these new versions? Don't they kind of mess things up? And on nationwide TV, Billy Graham blew it big time and telling all across America that uh, the King James Bible is not as easy to understand and so on and so forth. Typical baloney of the yea hath God said society. J. Vernon McGee testified to the fact that if he had a choice between the Antioch line of manuscripts and the Alexandrian line of manuscripts, he professed that the Alexandrian line would be better. He doesn't know what he's talking about. John MacArthur puts out a video recording addressing the question, does truth matter? And he's holding a perverted Bible in his hand. He's no more qualified to answer that question than a person who's played checkers his whole life is going to tell a professional chess player how to play the game of chess and win. And now from what I've heard, they use an ESV like Paul Washer and Lawson or Larson, whoever that guy is, and... Uh, John MacArthur and all these modern-day Calvinists that, that talk about the sovereignty of God and the decrees of God, they don't know what they are talking about. So question number two is in Jeremiah 8, why are we sitting still? Why do we sit still? The answer, because you have sinned against the Lord. Man, when sin starts working in someone's life, you're not walking the walk God wants you to walk. You're not running the race. You're not jogging with Jesus. You're not sprinting with the, uh, sprinting with the Savior. You're not running that marathon race with the Lord Jesus Christ. You're standing still. Sin kills. The Apostle Paul said to the Romans in chapter 8 of all chapters, just like we're in Jeremiah chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh, whether it's a brother or sister in Christ, cannot please God. Practically speaking, you're spiritually dead, and sin 
is what kills the walk or the race for the believer, any believer. Sin is no respecter of persons, and backsliding is no respecter of persons, and sin loves company. Now let's continue with our question and answer hour with the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 8. Look what it says in verse 19, chapter 8, 19. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people, because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? Well, that's the third major question here. Why did they provoke God? Well, those Jews believed they could serve both the Lord and their idols. There's the answer right at the end of of verse 19. They did not abandon the Lord. They just made him one of their many gods. But the Lord will not accept equality with any other God, friend, for he is God alone, the God of the Bible, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was sent to this earth to die and shed his pure, precious, powerful, eternal blood for you and me. You think God is going to give any of his glory to any other, quote, God, end of quote? Just as an unfaithful husband or wife provokes a spouse, So the unfaithful child of God grieves the heart of the Lord. You can't serve God and mammon, friend. The Bible says in this this chapter that they were all given to covetousness. In chapter 8, verse 10, Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one of them from the least, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness. Do you know what the Bible says about covetousness in the book of Colossians? In chapter 3, verse 1 of Colossians, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, if you've been saved, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And then go down to verse 5. Now watch this exhortation. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Now, that is the idolatry going on basically in the body of Christ today. It's the idolatry of covetousness, and covetousness could also mean a fake version for more money. Your modern-day scribes are spiritual perverts. They will have nothing to do with the absolute standard around the whole world of the King James Bible. So, getting back to the third main question In the question and answer hour of chapter 8 of Jeremiah, why did they provoke God? Because they believed they could serve both the Lord and their idols. And it says that right there in the end of verse 19. Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? God made a clear demarcation about them serving other gods and so on and so forth when of Exodus in chapter 20, When he brought them out of the land of Egypt, it says over there in chapter 20, in verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And if that's not enough, it says over there in verse 17, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And if there is one thing the devil wants more than anything else for any country to become socialistic, where everybody's sticking their nose into everybody else's business and telling everybody what else to do. There ought to be one that tells you in the end what you ought to be doing, and that's God Almighty through a King James Bible. While in our apartment, when we lived in an apartment in Kiev, Ukraine, a woman across the hallway where she lived there, she said, you know, we were taught to live by the mind of another man. And that's exactly what goes on in these so-called communist countries where they brainwash people to try to live by the mind of the man that's supposedly leading them. Yeah, he's leading them right into a devil's pit if they don't get saved. Now for the last couple of questions in this question and answer session of the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 8, it says in verse 20, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Well, 
This is an indication that when Jesus Christ comes back at the end of the tribulation, it's in the fall season. The seventh month when they have those three last holidays, well, holy days, uh, they had three in the springtime, one coming towards summer, which was Pentecost, and then the last three, which was gatherings, trumpets, and tabernacles. That's in the fall season. Verse 21, for the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Now here comes the question. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? You've got three questions right here. Well, there's actually two question marks. The verse again says, is there no balm in Gilead? That's a semicolon. And then, is there no physician there? Question mark. Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Question mark. You see that? Now, one of the main reasons is because those Jews did not heed God's warning and his long suffering reached its limit. You know, God does have a limit. He's long suffering and he's merciful, but sometimes he's just got to draw the line. Now, had they plowed their hearts in chapter 4, verse 3, it says over there in chapter 4, verse 3, For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the foreskins of your heart. It's always a heart issue. Ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire, and burn that none can quench it, because of the evil of your doings. So, what do we have here in chapter 8? There could have been a harvest of repentance, but it was too late for the country. The sickness was too far gone, and no medicine was available. And that's why you have in the very last verse of this chapter, is there no balm in Gilead? Now, look how Jeremiah answers these questions. Now, let's go over to Jeremiah chapter 45 and verse 11. What does he say? Go up into Gilead and take balm. O virgin, the daughter of Egypt, in vain shalt thou use many medicines, for thou shalt not be cured. Yep. And that is it, folks. You know, you got people running all over the place for health and getting health insurance and this and that and the other. The country of America has gone crazy with these insurances. It's a mafia. And yet they don't see the major problem, the problem of their heart and their soul and their spirit and what's going on inside. The physical body for the brother or sister in Christ is one thing, but the main thing is the inner man. And that's what the Lord wants to strengthen, the inner man. But sin will prevent you from that inner man and Jesus Christ being formed in that saved man or woman. So you've got these four major questions, although there's a number of questions in this chapter, and there's a number of answers to those questions. But we've picked out four. Number one, why were they backslidden? Why is the country, why are you brother or sister backslidden? The brother or sister doesn't want to acknowledge and admit the sin and get it right. Repent. That means have a change of heart and mind about the issue and get it right. And maybe folks have this happy, smiley, superficial ministry of false prophecy, just like it says in verse 11, Jeremiah 8, 11. Now, listen to this. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, look at this, peace, peace, when there is no peace, you've got a bunch of false preachers and teachers going around and saying, oh, revival, revival, things are going to really turn around, and America's getting right. You must not have read Second Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, and this whole list of sin listed after lovers of their own selves. And in verse 13, it says this, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Paul was prophesying about the last days, the last days being perilous times. We're in it right now. Question number two, why were they sitting still? Well, the question can be answered with one word, sin. They really didn't believe the enemy was coming. They didn't take the warnings of Jeremiah seriously. 
like this country ought to be taken seriously, the old prophets that God raised up. And you got people don't even know realize that they're at the end of the Laodicean period. Well, you got the first period of the first five centuries, and then you got the Middle Ages, a thousand years, and after that, you've got from 1500 or 1600, the King James Bible, revivals in the Philadelphian period of the church age, and now we're in Laodicea, where people are teeter-tottering. They're neither hot nor cold. They're lukewarm, and you don't think we're there, friend? After this country has produced more than 300 perverted Bibles by a bunch of spiritual perverts. Question number three. It's over there in verse 19. Why have they provoked me? That's what Jeremiah writes. Because they believe they could serve both the Lord and their idols. You know, slap on God on Sunday after you have a soccer game or a football game or a baseball game. And I'm talking about every sportsman in America that's hot-dogging it in the end zone just because he made a tackle or he recovered a fumble and the team is down 30 to nothing. They could care less about a King James Bible. And then you're going to talk about God just because you tackled somebody. Big deal. Or you knock somebody out. Big deal. Or you score a goal. Big deal. What are you doing? Are you praying? Are you spending time to fast and pray and lead your children and your wife and your children and your family uh, through the Holy Bible, a King James Bible? Or are you piddling around with this lightweight stuff? I don't care if you're a heavyweight boxer. You're a lightweight if you don't get right with God. And then finally, in verse 22, it's the very last verse of this chapter of the question and answer session with the prophet Jeremiah. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Well, let's say this. They were not only physically sick, they were spiritually sick. And back then, uh, under the Old Testament dispensation, because of their sin, they would be physically ill, and they had diseases of Egypt because of their disobedience to God. So we answer that question, or Jeremiah does, because the people did not heed God's warnings. And when God called those people to return, they did not want to return. They wouldn't seek the Lord while he could have been found. And God had to bring judgment upon that nation and take them into captivity. And there was the nation, Israel, 70 years under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar and his sons. There was no cure for the country. There is no cure for any country that's going to be living like they lived and live like believers, those that are in Christ, live and with a backslidden attitude. And the first question that was brought up in this chapter of questions and answers is why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Well, do you know why they couldn't recover at the end of verse 22? The very last word is recovery. Why couldn't they return or why wouldn't they recover? Well, the first answer to that major question is right in verse 8 and 9. Now listen carefully. This is where it all starts. How do ye say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word small w, not a capital W, like Barth and Bruner use that as a means to use any reference of the Word of God from any perversion of the Bible. And when I'm talking about the Bible, I'm talking about one Bible. Have rejected the Word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? Well, it is not biblical wisdom. It is worldly, sensual, devilish wisdom. And that's where it all starts. And that's where it ends. And that's what puts any country on the shelf. Dear friend, if you aren't saved, you need to be saved. The Bible says, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. You say, how do I get saved? Well, the apostle Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You have to receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. It's not only a mental agreement to the fact that 
that Jesus Christ died on the cross and was buried and rose again the third day. The thing is, you have to believe in him by accepting him, receiving him as your personal savior, trusting him so that when you die, you go to heaven. And if you've never done that, you've taken the mass or the liturgy of the Orthodox Church, or you've been baptized, or you were raised in a church somewhere, that's not salvation. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, and you must be saved. So do that today. All you need to do is just bow your head and say, God, I am a sinner. I don't want to go to hell. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried, and rose again. He's alive, and I want to accept him as my personal Savior right now. Do that and be saved. May the Lord bless you all. Amen and amen. You've been listening to the Bible broadcast with Perry Demopoulos. We're glad that you joined with us for today's broadcast and hope the Lord has spoken to your heart. If you'd like to know more about the Christian walk, please let us know. If you've made the decision to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you may write to us at the following email address, pdkjv1611 at gmail.com. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you in His will.